What's going on, everybody? This is Oliver Twix, the head nerd in charge, telling you to make sure you tune in every Thursday, of course, to see me. <laughs> and you can see my other friends and family doing the things of the things of the things. Listen, you do not want to miss it. It is family fun and crazy chaos. It's always some shit going on from every, it's so many twists and turns. You do not want to miss it. CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back get back CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back get back CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back get back CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back 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 CAP zapping all you hoes away like CAP zapping all you hoes away like Why didn't you tell me to bill you at the end of the season? And it's like $11,000 out of my pocket. And um, they're like, oh, I'm sorry. Everybody go. 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 <laughs> what's going on 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 y'all see i got ear pops today i've been ba listen to all the people who send Oliver Twigs badges, I took all that badge money and I went and got me some ear pods. So I don't hear none of y'all complain about no sound, no more cackle, cackle. It, the sound should be great. Y'all should hear me clearly. I should be sounding like I am announcing a presidential speech right now. Class is in session. Y'all bitches better come hurry up and take a seat because I'm going to start. Listen, I just first want to start off by saying I am grateful to all of you guys who support the ANTM to exclusive movement it started off as a hobby and has grown into this thing right here and i am so excited i am so grateful i love you guys who support it who support me who support all of our other things i do i am forever grateful for what i believe to be historical moment that's going on right now i don't know only time will tell but regardless of it i'm thankful like i've talked to some of the other antm girls and i can't spill their own tea but like good things have come out of these girls have gotten opportunities have gotten jobs have gotten signed um and i'm grateful to be the conduit for all these amazing amazing positive things with that being said <laughs> class this session hurry up listen my name is oliver twix I am your nerd boy cutie, always reporting for duty, here to do the Lord's work once again! And today, I have the distinct, oh girl, my ass is hanging out in the back. That's how you know a bitch's ass is real when you see it hanging from the side, bam. Let me correct myself because that is not for the glory of God. Anyways, today, we are talking to Nole Marin, who was a judge, yes, a judge, on America's Next Top Model. So without further ado, guys, I am going to send a request to Mr. Nole Marin so he can come into the classroom, honey. Thing of the thing. Ah, I'm so excited. Hmm. All right, we got this thing going on, baby. No way. Oh, baby, look at you, looking fabulous. Hold on, oh, let me go. Oh, no, look at you. Oh, how is that? How is it? Is it okay? Everything looking good? Can you Okay, yeah, me? that's good. Maybe if you want to tilt it. Oh. <laughs> you know I got to have a group, baby. Hold on, and what's the name of this good. one? Oh, this is Mr. Leo, my little teacup chihuahua. Look how cute he is. Oh, oh Mr. Leo. Ooh, daddy loves you. Can you see me okay? I can see Everything you perfect. Good? 
Okay, good. How are you? I'm doing well. I can't complain. I can't complain good. at all. Oh, awesome, my friend. Awesome. I'm so excited to talk to you today about the things I, and the things. I am so grateful, and I thank you so very much for the opportunity. And this is going to be fabulous. I really do thank you. Listen, it was so crazy. You're welcome, of course. It's so crazy because I felt like just yesterday I did my ANTM live with Yumi from Cycle Four, oh, and she Yumi. was recounting. Yes, Yumi, and she was recounting the moment when Rebecca fell back, and she was like, "No, they was like, call the police." And I don't know if you watched it, but I I thought that was the funniest thing ever well, in know, life. I'm from New York. I'm a native New Yorker, born and raised and conceived in Manhattan. And when you hear a thump like that, honey, it's a it's a gunshot. So I'm like, call the police. <laughs> F the ambulance. You know what I'm trying to say? So oh, that's what I really no. thought was going on. Plus, we were in downtown. And that time, downtown LA was not too fabulous. So it was more about the police than the ambulance. Than the ambulance. I got you. So you thought somebody potentially could have been doing some type of renegade activity on set. <laughs> Hello. And it should have been sometimes. <laughs> that is funny. Call the police is like my Achilles heel. Like when they put it down in the comments, I have to like keep my eyes up because when I see call the police, I think that is so funny to me. Call, <laughs> call the police, baby. Funny. Well, good. I'm no glad late. you laughed. It was a great time. No lay. It is. Yes. I that and I don't know if you saw Cycle 6, but when, um, oh my God, when Joni is like, I like to go to Los Angeles, and those two things are now like my Achilles. So like, I will immediately just erupt in laughter and whatnot. So yes, thank you for giving us that because it is still doing the Lord's work to this day. I'm glad it can keep you laughing and keep a smile on your face. That's all I can ask for. So, no, like, how does it feel knowing that top model is still a trending topic to this day? You know what? I'm surprised because you have to realize that when uh, we were doing the show in the beginning, uh, people really were, they were for it, but they really weren't for the show because reality was so new that people mm -hmm. didn't understand it and they really weren't as open to doing television and plus a lot of people were like it's going to ruin your career uh they won't take you seriously uh this is uh definitely not the right direction to go in if you want to move your way up in into fashion uh mm -hmm. i was like come on you know my friend asked me to do the show i said let's try it let's have fun with it and that's the kind of way we kind of i i did it out of friendship um, let's have fun with it. I wasn't really thinking big picture that, wow, this show is going to go on for, you know, more than a decade. And actually, I think it was maybe coined the number one reality show of 2000 to 2010, which is a great mm -hmm. honor to be a part of anything like that. And it, mm -hmm. it was just a really wild and fun time, you could say. What? Who, who was the friend that got you involved in Top Model? Jay Manuel, I'm sorry. Shout out to Mr. Jay. Hey, Mr. Jay, wherever oh, you are absolutely. in the world. He is fabulous, and we met in Jamaica on a, on a photo shoot, and we became, well, we, we were friends, but he was really awesome, and he really enlightened me, and we basically kind of, a few weeks later, he actually hooked me up with a job. We flew back down to Puerto Rico, and then we became really good friends after that, and that's how it all kind of came together for me on being gotcha, on Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So when you first got on Top Model, you were not a judge just yet, right? No, no, um, that, that, that's a whole other story, which we'll get into later if you would like, but I came on as a stylist and I did okay. episode, I don't know if it's episode five, I'm not exactly sure of the episode, and it was the water shoot that we did in Brooklyn in this large fish tank, and we submerged the girls into uh, these tanks wearing beautiful clothing and chiffon and flowy clothing, and um, that was my first time uh, being shown on the show. Gotcha. Well, I mean, I, for me, I would love to go in chronological chronological order, excuse me, from you being on Cycle 2 and then 3, then 4, and then, of course, time between that, and then you, you reappeared on 12, and then we'll talk about other stuff, too. But I know that photo shoot is one of my favorite photo shoots from Cycle 2 is the underwater photo shoot. It was Yoana and them and Camille and April and all of them. Talk about, like, how was it stepping on set, working on top model, doing that, like, how was it? 
You know, it was a lot of fun. It was completely um, different than a normal photo shoot, as you can imagine, because there was a lot of stop and go because they have to do the filming. They have to do mm -hmm. their little interviews. And the shoots were really kind of like over the top. So they were a little bit more uh, dramatic. And you could say uh, Cirque du Soleil, as I always used to say, than a normal shoot. The girls were very, they, were, they weren't models yet. So, you know, you really had to coach them and kind of mm -hmm. train them into it. Mm -hmm. Normally, when you work on a photo, sh a photo shoot, the girls have already worked a bit, or they're top models, mm -hmm. or they're girls who kind of, um, who did anything like them. But these girls were a little older, so it's a little bit mm -hmm. less malleable, as you can say. But they Got came to. through. You know, they came through. I mean, come on. Who's going to hold their breath in a beautiful, in a, in, in a giant fish tank? Um, I, don't, mm -hmm. I don't even know what the chlorine must have been like trying to open up your eyes <laughs> inside of that. But um, uh -huh. it was rough. But I think we got some amazingly genius moments. I think we got some mm -hmm. horrible genius moments also. And I uh -huh. think it was, it was great for television. I thought it was a lot of fun. And it was, it was hysterical when, when you look back at the whole thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we go from that photo shoot, which I absolutely love. My favorite photo from that photo shoot is April with that long red leg. And it's, oh, yes, that was so beautiful. She was, she, I mean, she, I think I coined her Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I think the movie I just uh -huh. came out. Oh, she was phenomenal. Uh -huh. And she was floating and her legs were extended. I mean, she was phenomenal. She really, mm -hmm. really, really knew how to give an underwater shoot. You would have thought she was doing this forever. And she could hold her breath. Mm -hmm. For like five minutes, it was insane. It was just insane. Yes, ma'am. I, I actually loved a few of them. I loved uh, Mercedes. I thought she was kind of beautiful. Mm -hmm. kind of like a little, uh, gorgeous. She was like a little gem. And um, yeah, there was a few beautiful shoots. I don't think Shandy was that great, and I don't think Ziamara was that great, unfortunately. Oh, I'm about to say definitely Ziamara. <laughs> <laughs> those girls are fabulous, but that image uh -huh. was not fabulous. Uh huh. And you know what? It may not it may not be a popular opinion, but I love Yoana's um embryo sack photo. I oh, like I it. I thought I mean it um she's done some incredible photos, you know, that season and of course um she won that season. I don't think it was my favorite, but it wasn't that bad if you you know, overall you could say. Mm hmm Okay, so you but, styled the photo shoot. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, love. So I was, gonna, I was gonna say, so you style the photo shoot for that episode. How does Nole continue working with Top Model? Because is like, d did you style the rest of Cycle Two? Um, they thought I was funny on that that episode, so I actually did a, uh -huh. a judging that for that episode, and then they asked me to travel with them to uh, Europe, uh, to Italy, and then to style a few of the uh, shoots while. We were in Italy, which I did. We, we went to Lake Cuomo, and um, we did um, another shoot. I can't remember exactly. Oh, we did Lake Cuomo. Then we did, uh, we, uh, did we go, was it Rome or, or Venice? We did this beautiful uh, old, uh, I think it was Florence. Was it Florence? I think we shot in an arena, an old arena. And then uh, the fashion show, my good friends, Dean and Dan, I helped them. Uh, get that uh, organized because I was working with Dean and Dan years before so that we got them for the finale fashion show and that was a phenomenal show uh, really fashion forward I thought it was awesome so I was doing all the fashion shoots in Milan and assisted with the fashion show dope so like one thing led just to another thing mm -hmm. yes it did it was and it was actually just kind of like okay, when a client says, oh, would you come with, would you do this, would you do that? So it was, I treated it like, you know, a fashion shoot and they wanted to have high fashion. So we, we tried to bring in as biggest uh, designers we could. That's why I got Dean and Dan. I know we had Dior for their arena shoot. I think it was in Florence. I keep, can't remember where it was exactly. And then um, when we did the nude shoot and it was the nude shoot that we did mm -hmm. in Lake Cuomo. So there was not much clothing for that. And it was right. just <laughs> The girls turned it out. I mean, I, they were really, really mm -hmm. awesome in that shoot, to be honest with you. Okay. So I'm interested to know, how does Nole go from styling and, like, you know, being, for lack of better terms, I won't say a plus one, but, like, you know, he came in while the show was already in progress, and, you know, we like him, he's filming, all that other stuff. How do you go from that capacity to a full-fledged judge for a cycle three? You know, um... I, I'm not exactly sure, to be 100% honest with you. Um, uh, 
I, I don't I don't really know. I know that I was supposed to go do the, the pre-judging in season three, but um, I didn't go there because that's another whole topic and story. Uh, so I didn't do that uh, due to the fact of other reasons. So then a few weeks later, they offered me a judging seat. And I accepted gotcha. it. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Do you care to tell us what happened or no? I mean, um, again, I I enjoyed my time on Top Model. Um, I'm very grateful for it. I thought it was a fun uh, experience. I loved work. I wish I would have had more time working with the girls, to be honest with you, because I love working with the people and working, you know, amongst the girls and really helping teach them go to the next level. Um, there was unfortunately an issue with, um, I, I'm going to use the word production or higher beings. I was um, asked to style episode five, and thank you for reminding me what episode it was, because I didn't remember, um, <laughs> episode five, and as a client would, they would say, oh, you know, please bill us at, you know, end of the job. So I styled the job um, on my own dime, and um, then as the days went on, they asked me to go to Europe, but unfortunately, they couldn't, you know, pay for my expenses, and I go, well, what does that mean? You have to pay for your flight, pay for your hotel, pay for all the expenses, and at the end of the season, bill us. Okay, that was a little bit of a risk, you know, putting it on my account, which was around $11,000. So at the end of the season, after the fashion show, we came back to America, and like a week later, I go to build the production. And um, unfortunately, like a week or two later, production says, unfortunately, we can't reimburse you your money because production's closed. And I'm like, but, why didn't you tell me to bill you at the end of the season? And it's like $11,000 out of my pocket. <laughs> and um, they're like, oh, I'm sorry. Um, you know, we'll, 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 uh, we'll somehow make it up to you. How are you gonna make up $11,000? Okay, so I was a little hurt and I was a little kind of like missed it. Like, how did, how, how, how's this happening? I had to pay to be on the show, which was a little awkward and kind of odd and weird that I had to pay to be on the show. So when season three came around, I'm, you know, I haven't talked about this in so long that I'm actually, thank you for jogging my memory. Um, I had a lawyer and the lawyer, I told her the story about, you know, I had to pay for being on season two because they never, uh, they told me the bill at the end of the season and I never, you know, got the money because they said uh, billing was closed or accounting was closed. And she was quite shocked and quite like, what that that doesn't make sense and that's not proper you know business i'm like that's what they told me and she says well okay well we're going to negotiate this contract and make sure that you know everything is in place before anything happens well i don't know what the heck happened but for two months they were trying to negotiate and their i hate to use the word the top model uh, side lawyers were not getting back to my lawyer and it was a week it was five days, it was four days, it was three days, it was two days. It was the day I was supposed to leave to LA to go do the pre-judging with Jay and Jay and Tyra. So it was supposed to be four of us. And my lawyer goes, no, Larry, your contract is not negotiated. And we've been trying for, through, for the last, you know, two months, the last, you know, two weeks, I've been crazily calling them all the time and they're not getting back. She goes, if you go on that plane, I cannot guarantee you're going to get paid. And I right. think you got another $11,000 like you just did. So I didn't get on the plane. And I had, there was a producer on the show um, that was very, a very nasty person. And I had a few incidents with this person and um, called me up screaming, cursing, uh, didn't, uh, basically vicious, vicious tongue. Um, you know, uh, saying things that you don't talk, you don't say to people when you're, you don't say to people, it was viciously vulgar and demeaning and uh, just bullying. And I was like, what, what kind of person is this? So I remember being very upset and, 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 and hurt. And then I remember like a few weeks later, a wonderful producer called who produced the judging segments and it went much smoother when it came to that end. So um, I had a rough beginning because I, it's not that I stood up for myself, but it's like, I, I couldn't work for free and I could not go on, on this plane and not have my contract negotiated. 
and then had right. to call me and th it was basically like you know it was a very almost threatening it was almost bullying it was a horrible horrible tone and and verbiage that they they threw at me on, over the phone and then hung up the phone on me i'm like wow what is no this? crazy but you know i want to always keep it light and keep it in a good in a good mindset that this was an amazing experience and it was fun okay. but, you, know, <laughs> you know but see going into the judging then preluded to a lot of awkward situations also and that was also the reason why i did not come back for season five because they wanted me to join jay um as the stylist and build the style part of top model which would have been exciting, you know, and really see more fashion and maybe have more uh -huh. interactions with the girls at that time and maybe bringing in design, a little bit more uh, of, of that level. But um, then when it came time to negotiate and, you know, my, my ex, this wonderful assistant who actually went on to work with Tyra for her first season or two of her talk show, she, um, uh, her name was Q. I remember she was calling me saying, we have only $2,000 you know, budget for the police are coming. Though, like you hear them, you hear the police. They coming. They're coming from the bank. <laughs> they're coming. <laughs> See, they're coming. <laughs> so, two thousand dollars is not a big budget for thirteen girls on a major network no. show. So she ended up using her finances, you know, to make the show good. So when I, when they offered me to go on to season five as a stylist, I said, look. Let's make a proper budget. Hypothetically, let's say, let's ask for five. Let's do a let's do a sliding scale. Thirteen to thirteen to eleven, five thousand. You know, eleven, uh, ten to seven. You know, four thousand, and like work it down so that in this budget, it's props, it's clothing, it's stockings, it's whatever you need it. I'm not sure if my if the assistant was included in that, but say the assistant. So it was a sliding scale, and they wanted to make the fashion segments more fashionable. They wanted to really bring the high-end style to it. But when they're only going to offer me 2000 or 2500 for 13 girls, I go, guys, I, I, I cannot make that happen. I know you want us to call in favors, and we can, but you remember, reality was not big at that time. People didn't want to just be on television. People didn't understand the power of TV or the, the understanding of branding and things on that nature at that time. So people were like, oh, you're on TV? You know, it's a rental budget and this is it. It, it was a whole different flavor back then. So mm -hmm. it was hard. And if you wanted me to take it to that next level, I needed proper, you know, security and, 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 and you could say finances to do that. $5,000 is not a lot of money for a fashion segment for 13 girls. No. You know? And so when they couldn't offer that, that one wonderfully, you know, that, that yelling person said that I was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, how dare I? And, you know, you are asking for too much and you're lucky that I even put you on. I mean, he was horrible. Ah, no. Horrible. So I was like, I think this is goodbye then. And that's how it ended, unfortunately. So it didn't end very well. And it ended very sadly because it was ridiculous. It was really ridiculous. And then weeks later, through the grapevine, um, the fabulous Miss Tyra was working on her talk show. So she didn't really know what was going on with the negotiations until later. And she was quite upset because she's like, that should not have happened. You know, and she wished she would have known. Oh, well, she was very busy. With, like, I mean, she's a wonderful woman. I mean, she's has a lot of things going on. She cannot be, um, she is one person. She can't do everything, you know? Mm -hmm. So she was entrusting in people uh, to handle her business that um, was not doing a great job. And unfortunately, that's how that part of Top Model ended for me. And then I did come back as a guest judge. And you said it was season 12 it was? I, was mm -hmm. it 12 I came back? 12. It was yeah. fun. It was actually, it was hysterical. And uh, it has, it, you know, the show has been, was much more popular, thank goodness. And it was a much bigger uh, stage set. And we would judge for like 13, 14 hours, you know, 10 hours, you know, air condition. It was like hellish. You know, when I went back in season 12, they were done in three hours, four hours. It's like, 
whew, you guys learned how to speed through that real quickly. And this was a this would have been a lot easier than 13 hours of shooting with no air conditioning. It was hell, hell, hell. But you, you know, guys used finished? to film for 13 hours with no it air conditioning. Well, off and on, you could say, because you know, when as you know, when you're filming, you can have no you can have no air conditioning. Oh yeah, because so you can you can hear the hum. Air. Yes. So not all the time when we weren't shooting. We had the air conditioning, but can you just imagine for 45 minutes with no air conditioning if you were shooting or oh. and you're in a velvet suit, you know, snatched in like I was, like, oh, <laughs> you know, so, oh my gosh. So, but it was, um, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was a trip. It was, a, it was a trip. And um, judging was great. I do have one, I'm a big fan of the 70s and I was uh -huh. a big fan of like the, of the 80s and I love pop art and I love, you know, Studio 54 and, you know, Janice Dickinson was a major gorgeous beauty and a big icon mm -hmm. of mine, along with Jerry Hall and, you know, you uh, Halston and Diane von Furstenberg and Edgar von Furstenberg. Our rival, unfortunately, was um, pre-made kind of in the aspect of that I was supposed to attack her and just, you know, my job mm. was to attack Janice and to always, you know, come at her at any sound bite she could come, come back with another. And I was so in love with her and so I like, thought she was so gorgeous and just really looked up to her as a model because she was a fierce model. I mean, look back mm -hmm. at her weird stuff and look at through her career. She was amazing. And the face and really was mm -hmm. one of the first true exotic beauties to break the mold of this industry. And coinage to her across the board, but I could never tell her that. And I always had to attack her. So as, <laughs> as the weeks went on, you know, the animosity was kind of growing, but I realized later on, I saw her many years later and um, we were on, San, we, were, we were on NLA on San Vicente near the Starbucks or that, uh, I think near the Starbucks or the veterinarian. And we, I went into a pet store, I was picking up dog food for Empress Mini at the time. And I turn around and Empress Manny. Yes, may she rest in peace, that little gorgeous angel. The first true legendary Pomeranian, not the other one. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is Manny. Uh -huh. And um, she came right up to me and said, Hey, how you doing? And I'm like, Good. She goes, I just want you to know something. I go, What? She goes, You know that I was off of TV. I like you. And I'm like, I like you too. And that was like a moment of like, Oh, I couldn't say any more though. I won't tell her how much I really liked her, but she's awesome. So it was, the show was exciting. The show was interesting. Um, I wish I could have been there longer to really show them the fashion, but with that one person there that was extremely, you know, bullying and, and demeaning and, 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 and personality, which was very nasty, I, can, I can't be around that. You know, that's not my style and that's not the kind of energy I like to fill my world with, you could say. But I wish everyone the best. I hope they're happy and life goes on and goes in the way it needs to go. Well, <laughs> well, well, well. Um, yeah, I, 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 I dare ask you who, who, this, who this screaming judge is, but I think we... Oh, it wasn't a judge, it was a producer. I mean, I'm but... sorry, not judge, producer, yes. I don't like to call names. I mean, it was, um, it was a, a big producer alongside, and I prefer to keep it that way. I don't need to like give it any energy. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I had to meet them again, though. Now that I think about it, oh my gosh, that was oof. Oh, that was horrible. It was very fierce, very Dynasty Darling, though. Very <laughs> uh huh. I mean, Deborah Hull. Oh yes, <laughs> that was fabulous. So, I felt okay, good. So when I Wait, wait, you said you guys had another meeting. Unfortunately, we did. Mm -hmm. And I felt good at that because I walked out like Dominique when she was talking about that burnt champagne. I was like, yes. Chandler, what, can, what, 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 what can we know about the meeting? Um, uh, I mean, I don't know. I think there was a negotiation of, 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 um, of, of, one, of, the, of one of the people on the show. Um, mm -hmm. and the, I was alluded, I was notified that this person may be calling me. I'm like, oh, why, why are they going to call me? I don't want to speak to that person. They go, well, you know, go speak to them. Da, da, da. So, um, my friend asked me, they said, go speak to them. And I go, but you know, I'm not trying to take your thing and I'm not interested in that. If you left permanently because you wanted to, it's one thing, but if you are negotiating, I don't want to, um, 
you know, step on kids. And I'll go. And I go, okay, I'll go. Went to the meeting and um, sat there in Jerry's Coffee Shop on, is it Spring Street in Soho? Spring Street in Soho. Yes, it was. I don't remember what year this was. And um, they told me that this person may be leaving and they may be looking for a replacement. I'm like, mm-hmm. And I go, yes, I can do that job because I did it already in Canada's Next Home Model. And um, I said, okay. Then they said, how did you like it? I go, I was fabulous. It was very easy. I go, I can never feel that person. I'm a different person, but I can do, I can bring myself to it. And then I, and then we started to go into negotiations. I go, well, how much are we talking? Episodically, da, da, da. and they rate, they quoted a rate that was like under what I was making a few seasons back. And I'm like, no, I want X, Y, Z. And they said, well, what, what makes you deserve what makes me deserve because that's what I want. And it was it, almost exactly what the other person was making because I kind of knew what the other person was making because they told me. And, um, well, uh, I go, I want this. Well, it's not going to happen. Oh, goodbye then. I stood up and walked out. And that's the last time I ever saw that person, I think. Oh, no, unfortunately, I saw him on season 12, I think, again. Maybe one more time. Yeah, I did. I didn't say hello. Okay, so you don't, I, I'm going to respect you not wanting to tell us who the producer is, but and, you know, um, um, no, you can always tell me to mind my own business. You can say, Oliver, mind your business. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just very I'm inquisitive. Know. So is it, is it that you were potentially going to replace Mr. J because you were yes. like his equivalent mm -hmm. on Canada's top model. So you were mm -hmm. potentially going to replace him when he was about to leave. He was about to leave. I was never going to replace him. He was about to leave. So gotcha, gotcha. I never was going to replace him. Let's get that. Let me get that straight. He was gotcha about to leave. Right. Um, they wanted him to come back. They wanted him to come back. But he was thinking if he wanted to come back, you know. So they came and asked if I would be interested, and I didn't want to take the interview, but because my friend asked me to. Or says, you know what, go and see what they say. Okay. And I did. And okay. um, that's what happened. And this producer is a very well-known producer. And he was uh, <laughs> on the same level as, you know, one of the creators. And you could say, and I think people know who that person is. He was just very violent. He was a very vicious, um, nasty, demeaning, um, a brutal um, almost kind of like a, it was just horrible. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was just, just horrible, you know, just not, not nice, not nice. But you know, let's think of the good things. Um, I, I heard this person had had multiple problems with many people and I'm not the only one, you know, mm -hmm. I was probably the only one in, that in the very beginning said no and backed away and didn't get on a plane and then, you know, said, no, I want this. And if I'm not going to get this, we can't work it out. So I may be the, one of the first people to stand up to him for this show, I could say. I don't know about his other shows, but I went on to other, sh other TV sets and worked with some incredible producers that I'm friends with till this day. And um, even Tyra created one of the shows with Ashton Kutcher called um, True Beauty, which was on ABC. True Beauty mm -hmm. was incredible. The late Denise Cramsey was such a refined genius lady and quality and, and, and wonderful, wonderful. God bless her and may she rest, but she was a wonderful, wonderful creative soul and her team around her, uh, Rod Asa, her Bancroft, they were so amazing and I'm so friends with these people to this day. They're just beautiful souls and really lovely people. And you know, that thing, oh, well TV maybe isn't that bad because I did have a nasty taste like, ooh, is it gonna be like that? Like, I'm, I'm not into that, you know? I'm not looking to mm -hmm. be abused verbally and emotionally and mentally and telling me how they're gonna do this and do that. It's like, ugh. I don't like that. That's not who I am. Yikes. All right. Well, let's get into some into, 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 into um sorry. Girl, I'm sorry, Anola. I'm over here gagging. That was a lot. Okay. Let's get into some of these fan questions. So Sydney99 wants wants to know. She's saying, I'm Goot. I want to know favorite ANTM panel story, your favorite photo shoot, and favorite moment left on the cutting room floor. Oh my goodness. Favorite photo shoot? That was um, yeah, we can start there. Mm -hmm. Your favorite photo <laughs> shoot. You know, 
Um, I love the images that we did. Um, I think we were in Florence with the Dior. It was absolutely gorgeous. Mm, mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to have to say, let's just go and coin the water shoe because it was the first one and it was so wild. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to have it's a, a mix between those two. The ones that okay. I know we're talking about, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have a favorite moment from panel you remember? Mm, favorite moment from panel? Oh, goodness gracious. There's so many wonderful, wonderful, odd moments that we had Tyra and I talking and Janice spewing craziness and we were having fun <laughs> and dancing in Africa. Uh, there, I don't have like one particular one that, that comes to mind right away, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I don't, unfortunately. But... I have multiple moments that outside the cutting room floor that were hysterical and fun, um, but that I don't really have one. I wish I did. I'm trying to think, but I don't think I do. My favorite fashion show definitely was the water show in Africa when the girls okay. were oh, water. Though that was legendary. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was legendary, just, just mm -hmm. phenomenal. And mm -hmm. I think those last four, those last four girls standing there were so gorgeous, from Brittany. You know, um, on they were just flawless girls. You know, just beautiful. Any one of them, Kenya. You know, Naomi one, Naomi one, and then uh, Caitlin, gorgeous. I mean, those girls uh -huh. were all. Those were like incredibly four beautiful girls. You could say that I felt that was very proud to see those girls standing there, and they all look amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, they look even better. I now. just was with they're Kenya. Dead. I just was with Kenya this past weekend down in Florida, which you guys watching, you will see some of it soon. I'm going to put the oh, vlog up. Really? And she walked in, and mother is face, mother is jawline. Her body still looks nice. She Snatched. is gorgeous. She is snatched. Yeah, she is pulled. And have you seen Brittany? She had two children, and she is mm -hmm. flat as a board. Amazing. Looks like, mm -hmm. I mean, better than ever. I mean, and I just did a photo shoot with two of the girls and killed it, honey. The photographer, uh -huh. UK, killed it. I mean, it was smashing, smashing images. Yes. I'm, sure, I'm sure you've seen those. They were amazing, amazing images. Naima and Kaylin? No, yes, yes. Naima and Kaylin did it. And they were gotcha. both on fire. Killed it. I mean, oh, every pose was, was there. Those girls really grew. And they're so beautiful now and so sweet, mm -hmm. you know. Those are those girls are awesome, and those like I wish I got mm -hmm. to know them, you know, more back then. Mm -hmm. But we were so um, privy not to even not we weren't privy. We, were, we had to be so guarded away from them so that we had no contact at all, and that was a sad thing about it because I didn't get to know some of them. And then season two was the same thing. Mm -hmm. Season two was different. That Japan thing was, whew. Yeah, season three. I, I, Season, oh, excuse me, you're right, season no, three. No, you're fine, I got you, I season got you, you're fine. Catch me, thank you, darling, thank you, thank you. Uh -huh. Season three, Japan was was wild. I mean, we went in the middle of like a heat wave. Mm -hmm. And not speaking the language, we didn't know, it was a heat wave. And here we are going out, trying to sightsee, and me and Nigel and his wife, Chris, were like, darn, we we're about to pass out and die. Like, why is it so hot here? Then we realized we're walking in a heat wave <laughs> through, you know, Japan. But uh, Japan was a very interesting trip and um, just very interesting, you know, time for the show because it was kind of taking to this next level and everything. Mm -hmm. And both of those girls, I mean, have gone on to do quite well for themselves, thank goodness. And it mm -hmm. really good to see how they've propelled themselves into actors and TV personalities and things on that nature. Yeah. But um, so... So, Mr. C. Dean wants to know, how was the process of elimination done during your time on the show? Was there an actual vote by the judges for eliminations, or did production pull more of the strings? Um, it really was our, you can say, decision. Um, I think, you know, this is a reality show, and we are creating story, and we are trying to create something so people can really look at um, so mm -hmm. we did go for the girl that had a great story, but also gave great pictures. It kind of was an interesting mix, I think, of, of what was going on. But no one ever came to us and said, you have to choose this girl. That never happened. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Vanity underscore Prime wants to know, 
Um, why did you guys give Norell the boot in cycle three, even though Anne had the worst photo that week? And, and the, the the reason why I included this, I'm pretty sure you're gonna speak to a larger point, just knowing just knowing how you how you talk. Anne stayed around a long time. And a lot of people felt like Ann should have been at. I talked to Ann. I told Ann this to her face. Ann Ash should have been went home. It was a bunch of girls who had did better than Ann, had better pictures than Ann, but Ann stayed around. Why did you guys keep Ann around so long? I'm probably the worst, one of the worst people to ask that because I was a huge fan of Ann and I loved Ann. Oh, I loved her volleyball <laughs> style. Um, she's she's a gorgeous mother. She, um, mm -hmm. oh, Anna's she's beautiful, stunning now. You know, she's she's mm -hmm. working, she's a working model. Thank God, she that she that Fiat commercial a few years ago could not stop looking at that darn Fiat and her in the in the commercial. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness for her. And um, I was a big fan of Anne, so I really wanted Anne probably around. So, like I said, I am probably the worst person because I saw the potential. And I think being a good awesome. scout and being a good mm -hmm. stylist is seeing potential in someone that maybe gotcha. you can't see right away. And that's what I love to do. Okay, Mr. Leo, he's going to go down. But I love the idea of seeing Anne and her growth that she did. And like I said, look, she's working and she looks amazing. Norelle was a mm -hmm. beautiful girl. I mean, she really mm -hmm. had. She kind of looked like um, a cousin to a Jessica Miller, who was a top supermodel. I don't know if you know. Ooh. Who she, you know, excuse me, let me put him down. Mm -hmm. um, oh, no, you're Miller. fine. So you're she, fine. Um, she was. A, she's a gorgeous woman, a gorgeous girl. But I just love. I love Anne, and I, I think her friendship with um, Eva was quite quite interesting. I just thought it was. Uh, I just. I'm a fan of Anne. So sorry, I'm not the best person to ask. That question, I guess you could say. Gotcha. No, I get it. I get it. Okay, so David David Hyde Fierce wants to know: Did he call the police? <laughs> the police? No. Um, I think he definitely called the ambulance. And again, uh -huh. what saved her was that she had a weave in her hair, and that's where they kept saying a weave saved it. her life because the weave was a I think it was a braided and weave, and it was so so heavy and dense that when she fell, it was almost like a protection on her head. Can you believe that? Right. Who, who I, wa I want to know, from you sitting, sitting at the judges panel, what was going on in your brain when you saw that woman just go straight back and hit the ground? Well, I remember she looked ill. And again, remember okay. that it was, it was hot. There's no air condition when you're filming. So we Ooh, all were a little bit yeah. hot. Mm -hmm. But she, when she came up, she looked like clammy. You would say the word clammy. And uh, just a little pale. And all of a sudden, I just remember we were looking at them. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. her eyes pulled back in her head. And boom. And I was like, oh, she, she teleported. Well, the police, I guess, you know. But um, <laughs> I, I, it looked like she died. It really looked like she just dropped dead and died because it looked like she just like boom. And I've never really seen anyone pass out before, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. So it was very scary. You know, it was very scary. Okay. And she just lied there, like, and I hate to say it, she looked like she had passed, just died, like boom. And it was a really loud thump because she, the whole body weight, she wasn't very heavy though, but it was still the body weight of, I don't know how much she weighed, but it was the loud, loud thump. And, uh, they took her to the ambulance, and I think she was dehydrated or something of that nature. I don't remember really. I don't want to say what she had. I forget what happened, but uh -huh. maybe she was dehydrated or something like that. And then, you oh know, she was, the girls were tired. They weren't probably eating correctly because they were, you know, they were on a tight schedule and production and everything. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really tough thing to, to do these reality shows. You know, people think it's, oh, you get on them. First of all, congratulations to you. And oh, thank show. you. You are thank you. amazing, amazing, amazing. You are the best. I absolutely adore you. I wish you all the <laughs> success you. with this. And I'm really, really excited for you. But thank you. as you know, it's rough. You know, it's a lot of, uh, you got to be on. They want, they want you on. They want energy. They want that, you know. And yes. It's time. I mean, and now you're doing this too. I mean, hello. Don't run yourself too thin. Make sure you got yourself, your energy together. You're taking care of yourself mm -hmm. because it really is. People say, oh, it's easy. It's not easy. Filming is not easy. You know, people no. are like, oh, I, I want to be on a reality show. 
okay, you you got to be on point. You need to have those things that they want. Producers are good. It's very demanding. And by the it's you're very done, demanding. The you are like spent. You're just like, oh, you're tired. You go to sleep. Yeah. My boyfriend. Yeah. I tell. <laughs> I don't. I don't tell people all the time. Excuse my vulgarity, but I'm like, if anybody deserves, <laughs> if anybody deserves some good noggin every day, it is my boyfriend because he has endured me filming a reality TV show because I would come home and it's it's draining. It takes mm. a lot of time. You come home with your emotions all over the place. You have producers exactly. calling you at the last minute. You got to be flexible. You got to hurry up and wait. You got to stand. You got to act gotta like good. you weren't sitting here. For, you got to look good. You got to act like you just weren't sitting here for three hours not doing anything. Right. You got, it's, it's, a, it's a job. Energy, energy up. Okay, oh, okay, shots. You know, like, oh, God, I mean, yeah, it, it, it knocks you out. And then you go home and you're supposed to, like, unwind. But then you're thinking about everything. Of, Did I do this right? Oh, this. Oh, and, yes. then it's like, and it's like, yes, oh, my God, yes, you have to, like, yes. uh, decompress, as you would say. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like, and then God, you have to do that every day back to back. Sometimes, you know, thank goodness, I think you have a day off in between, I hope. But if you're shooting more than two days, it is, oof. Rough, 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 rough. So imagine these girls. You know, they're under a microscope. Yeah. They're in a they're in a fishbowl, and you know, but women, you know, and times of the month, and energies, and things are happening at home, and things are happening with themselves, and mm. it's just stressful, you know. And so you have to give it up for any one of those girls that were on the show, and and anyone in reality who goes through this because it is it is a mm -hmm. tough thing more than people I think can kind of imagine. So Sarah no wants to know, I would love to hear his take on Tyra's famous, we were rooting for you scene. How was she afterwards? Did it seem like she was actually that upset or did it seem a bit fake or like she was just doing it for the TV view? You know, I can't speak 100%, but I think there's a lot going on in Tyra's mind at that time because she was releasing a single, if I'm not mistaken. I think oh, no, the going, song had already came out. Mm -hmm. The song, the song already, already came out. Okay, then the song already came out. There was something going on, I think, within her because that came out of nowhere. Like it was just mm -hmm. like zero to a hundred. And we're like, mm -hmm. what? Like, you know, we all woke up like, okay. Yes, we were rooting for this girl. We were, we were rooting for all of the girls or the girls that we really like. And um I think maybe Tyra was rooting for her, maybe, you know, a little bit more at that time and really wanted to see a, a girl like herself, come from the, I don't mm -hmm. use the word inner city, but, you know, and really make it. And she did, supposedly, if I'm not mistaken, her grandmother took some money to put on, to do this mm -hmm. and that, and really, you know, try to launch her. And I think Tyra saw her kind of like fade out, like, I don't want to do this anymore. But meanwhile, she could have seen what people were trying to really help her propel herself. I don't know mm -hmm. where the outlandish thing came from, but it did, and you know, uh, it was a little out of the blue. So I'm gonna say mm -hmm. there's something going on in Tyra that, you know, alluded to that. Maybe she saw herself in her. I don't really know. Gotcha. Gotcha. I don't know. It's a very interesting thing, though. Cover girl Nay wants to know: Does Nole regret his comment about Yaya with her looking like she was about to go ride on a giraffe? There were a bunch of questions about this, and you I know, believe it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, you got it. You know, I, it's such an interesting time in the world right now. Um, mm -hmm. When it comes to um, everything, you can't say this, you can't do that, you can't, you know, it's such a, we're so highly, you know, uh, tensed with saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing. And life is about, if someone were to say to me, oh, you know, you look like uh, so-and-so, I'm not going to be like upset by that. But um mm -hmm. During that time, in fact, you have to go by the era, the, the days, the, the weeks, the months, the years. During that time, models mm. had a model look. They wore the little black uh, t-shirt, the tight jeans, the little dress. Da -da. So you really could not, at that time in fashion, have any per personal any personal style, but the model gotcha. dress code. Okay? Now, mm -hmm. you can't have a model dress code. You need to have personal style. There's, we're not in that cookie cutter uh, uh, size, height, look, it's totally different. Now, everything 
it's a smorgasbord of anything that you can be. You could be thin, you could be this, you could be that, you could be all different ranges of everything now is accepted. Back then it wasn't, okay? So when I said that, it was that I was supposed to be funny. I was supposed to take, my, 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 my directions were find something and make everything funny. Come back with, with a funny sound bite. So I did, and I thought that was funny. Um, if she took it personal, I hope she didn't take it personally, but I think she did because I saw years later that she was upset, but it was just the time frame of things. Mm -hmm. And I don't regret saying anything because I didn't mean it personally to her. It was supposed to be funny. It was supposed to be, you know, campy and it was supposed to be enjoyable. It wasn't supposed to be directly at her in any negative form of way. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And so, and so n n now looking back on it, do you have any change of views or like if it's, this time in the, if it's this time in the world? Absolutely. If it's gotcha. this time of culture, uh, uh, of awareness, and you can't do it, absolutely. You can never yeah. say that. You can never say that. Mm -hmm. It would be the worst thing ever. But back mm -hmm. then, it, it, it was supposed to be funny and lighthearted, you know? It wasn't supposed to be in a in a racial slur or in a, in, in a bad terminology. I mean, I'm an African-American man, half Jewish, half black, half everything. So how can I be prejudiced against anything, you know? And mm -hmm. I, you can't say that at this time in the world, you know? You can't say, oh, he looks like, uh, he looks like a man. You can't say that anymore because that's horrible, you know? He may be a man, mm -hmm. he may be a woman, you never know. Everything is open, thank God. You know, you know we have transgender, where people are all fluid these days, all races, all colors, all sizes is accepted. You know, back then it was totally different. So it would have, if you say that now, it's not accepted. And, you, and I could not say that. Gotcha, okay. Um, Darren Christopher, 1996, wants to know, who did you want to win for cycles three and four? Three and four. Honestly, and let's go from three. I think the two girls standing were the best. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Yaya and Eva. Yaya yeah, yeah, and Eva. Um, I think Yaya's had a more, uh, you could say more of a international classic model beauty that mm -hmm. could work. She really was a beautiful girl and her proportions mm -hmm. were, were strong, really beautiful proportions. Mm -hmm. Eva's proportions were maybe not as, as, as perfect as Yaya's back then for modeling. But, you know, Eva had a great story. Eva had, like, you know, there you go. With the story. Her story was overcoming anger and, feeling, and finding beauty within herself, you see? Mm -hmm. So both of those girls could have won, and both of those girls, you know, would have done well. I mean, Yaya's a phenomenal actress. I mean, what, can, mm -hmm. what more can we say? Yaya right. is phenomenal. She's proven it and went surpassed. A lot. Right, so right. Let's go there. And then cycle four, Naima, Kenya, Brittany, Tiffany, last, like said, No, those last four girls all could have won and been gotcha. phenomenal. Um, the, you know, they were beautiful. Like I said, just standing there, they were a panel of beautiful girls. I think Top Model was a little bit ahead of itself because Naima now, have you seen her girl? I would. I just worked with her a few months ago. She killed it. I mean, mm -hmm. Caitlyn did too. They both killed it. Um, Naima's really her look right now is really what the world is about. It's kind of mm -hmm. like this multicultural um, yeah. personality. She's really like her look now is more favorable, you know, now than it was then. So we, you know, you could say the show was a little bit ahead of itself when it came to that. When we were doing Top Model. I used to say, well, you know, we're not really looking for, I mean, well, are, are you looking for the next top model? I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I was really coming from fashion. Those girls were uh, a certain look, certain body weight, and a certain age. By mm -hmm. the time they were 21, if you, were, if you weren't on every photographer, editor, um, you know, magazine, editor, photographer, designer's radar, by the time you're 17, and by the time you were like, you know, 18, by the time you were 19, 20, if you weren't already a supermodel, by the time you were 20, it was, it was never going to happen to you. Never mm -hmm. going to happen to you. So our girls, you know, were already older. They're in their early 20s, uh, late, late teens, early 20s. I forget exactly their age. So 
it was a different thing. I go, we're looking only for the next, you know, top commercial model. You know, the girl that can sell the everyday household things. Maybe not always fashion. Um, but now that's totally changed, you know? Now mm -hmm. we have bloggers. Now it's all about Instagram. It's all about social media. It's all about what's your numbers. So looks are secondary to the personality and to the numbers on your social media. That is where gotcha. the industry has completely changed. Love mm -hmm. all the top model girls out there today. But, you know, would they really have been supermodels back in the day? No. You know, but not to say they're not beautiful, but it's a different time in the industry. We're up to where it's about social media. It's about, it's, it's about, like I keep saying, your numbers, about your personality. Show something about yourself. Let me see who you are. What are you about? What do you like? What don't you like? Before, it's like, don't let anybody see who you are. Just look beautiful. You know, become the, the mannequin for each designer. You know, uh, change yourself for each look. We don't really care what you like or, or what you say. Just look perfect. So the industry has changed greatly in that aspect. And due to social media, due to reality television, that is what has made the fashion industry change also, and the whole world. Gotcha. Okay. So I'm trying to see my thumb kind of make my thing go like this. Okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, Tomer, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. I'm so sorry. It's asking, April mentioned that you told her about the list of approved contestants by Sephora. Can you confirm or deny this? Say that again. April mentioned that you told her about the list of approved contestants by Sephora. This is back in cycle two about, um, there's like this, th this theory and some of the contestants I've talked about, about Sephora, who was one of the grand prizes. They had an approved list of girls who could win because those were the girls they would prefer to represent their brand, their brand. Can you confirm or deny this? I never spoke to April, so I have to deny okay. it. Okay, April, it's simple. April, yeah. Mm hmm Okay. Norman, Norman wants to know, this is Norman from YouTube. Norman Morose is asking, did you feel any discomfort with the race swap photo shoot from Cycle 4? Um, I thought it was a little bit odd, um, but again, we were doing, and I keep saying this, we weren't really doing normal photo shoots. We were doing these over the top things to make people go, what? Like, wow. Mm -hmm. Like what models really go on tight ropes? You know, what models really do 85% of the shoots that we did, you know? Um, mm -hmm. so it was just, I just kind of like, okay, well, you know, here we go again, doing another wild photo shoot um discomfort being like i said a multicultural person and my mother being african-american um i was just like oh well i guess i didn't really sink into me maybe as deep as mm -hmm. what other people was, was thinking to be honest gotcha okay so there's another question about whether or not um cover girl choosing the winner i've i'm Jan janice janice has been this has been pink with janice back in the days janice was like you know cover girl choose the winner um but i want to open the question up and say going to the question i just asked you were there any instances where the the people who were the um the representative of the prizes did they come in and say like these are the girls that we prefer these are the girls that you know that are here that we would like to see move on these are the girls that we would be okay with winning that never happened. Never happened on on my two uh, two seasons. Um, mm -hmm. No, no. Okay. No. Alex wants to know. I need him to talk about the Janice and Tyra T, since a lot of contestants could feel the tension. And this is a story that has developed in prior years about Janice and Tyra now always getting along. You being there, what do you care to share about your experiences of the two? You know. Janice um, has a really wild and amazing personality. Um, she comes from an era of modeling that is, you know, decadent, just decadent. Mm -hmm. You know, it was all about, you know, glamour. It was all about beauty. It was all about partying. It was all about opti. It was all about much more, more, more. You know, and um, I think um, I'm, I cannot speak for Janice at all, um, but I think. Tyra, I think Janice saw Tyra as a model, but she 
maybe never said, well, she wasn't where I was, you know? And I mm -hmm. think maybe that's where it came from. I mean, when you look back, I, I'm not, the show's phenomenal, right? But mm -hmm. when I left the show, I never really saw the show. So unfortunately, if you reference things, I really don't know. I don't even remember what season I did that guest appearance. So um, <laughs> I, I, was doing my other, I was doing my own life. Um, again, I love television. I love doing it. I'm working on new projects to, to, to try to get back on television for things that are really fun and I'm excited about. But I was just doing my world. I remember seeing one season or two seasons that Paulina said something. Now, Paulina was a legendary supermodel and probably one mm -hmm. of the most graceful, gorgeous figures ever in our fashion industry and in our modeling world. And I remember her saying something a little snarky uh, once when I saw the show, I picked up the show about Tyra. Well, you know, I was, I don't know about, she said something. And I remember saying, oh, that was a little snarky. So mm -hmm. Tyra was a supermodel, but she went from supermodel kind of quickly and went into like the commercial Victoria's Secret. So it was a little mm -hmm. different. Um, I think Janice maybe um, respected Tyra, but I think mm -hmm. she was like, I am a, a true supermodel. I, that's mm -hmm. what I, I could be wrong. That's, that's just my outside looking, looking at it. And we take it. So, okay. Okay, so um, just to, to, to clear it up, I'm going to ask this question. You kind of touched on it earlier, but I'm, I'm going to ask you again. Why was he there for only two cycles as a judge? Was he replaced by Miss J, or did the production wanted him and Janice out? Okay, so Psych will, will, step, will kind of digress a little bit to how, in the beginning. Uh -huh. I was asked to go and I was asked to not be a judge, but to go with Mr. J and kind of build that fashion part. Styling part. Girls. And yeah, Jay would do his thing as art director. I would be like the stylist, I guess, working more with the girls, styling them, maybe talking to them, seeing how they feel. I'm not exactly sure how they were producing it. And the problem was I, the budget was very, very small for a fashion show. And as a mm -hmm. fashion show, they wanted to elevate the look and the, the flavor of the show. Hypothetically, let's just use the word $2,000. You, It's hard at that time to work uh, with 13 girls or 12 girls, or even maybe sometimes 10 girls with such a small mm -hmm. budget because TV was not, um, reality was not really that, um, uh, large at the time. Remember, Top Model was like the fourth or fourth show of a reality. You know, people really didn't know. They thought reality was going to be around a few weeks, a few years. Mm -hmm. They never thought it was going to be to where it is today. They mm -hmm. never. They didn't. They didn't expect it. I, I, um, I'm just backtracking because it just goes with the whole story. People said, "Don't do the show because it's going to ruin your career." It's oh, you'll be known as a joke. They actually wanted. Um, um, Andrea Vantali to be a judge. They asked him from day one. He said, I can't. Vogue would never allow me to do a television show. Fast mm -hmm. forward, I don't know how many seasons later, Vogue needed him to get out there and get press. So then he did, he was able to accept a judge's position. Um, that's what mm -hmm. I heard. I could be wrong, but that's what I had heard from them. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I could not get my contract, I could not pay to be on the show. I could not put my own personal money into the show anymore because I already done that in season two, as I explained to you earlier. Um, and I never was reimbursed for that $11,000, which I was promised and was supposed to have gotten, but somehow production was closed and I never, I mean, who pays for their own flight, food, travel and expenses to, to, to do that show? I mean, that's what, it's ridiculous, you know? that I mm -hmm. didn't get a cent back for anything. So, you know, I guess I paid to be, I, I had my own infomercial, I guess. What can you say, right? Mm -hmm. That's how I, yeah. I have to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. So I was afraid of, wow, if you're only gonna give me this and I'm gonna have to put in at this, I'm not gonna make hardly any money then. So that's why I could never accept the contract because they were not willing to negotiate a proper contract for a fashion show with 13 models. Mm -hmm. So okay. 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 So Carol underscore Kisslick wants to know, 
how how was being on Canada's next top model different from being on America's next top model? Canada's well, first of all, my role was different. I I was the art director, like Jay Manuel was, so I got to really work mm -hmm. with the girls. Canada's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful country, and and um, and Toronto's an amazing city. Um, Jay was. Um, Tyra of the show, and there's Jeannie Becker, um, there's Yasmin, and there was um, um, Mike Rez. Um, beautiful judges, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, the girls, the, um, it was, it was, it was more fun because yeah, I hate to use the word Jay was, you know, really involved with a lot of the production. Um, we did some really beautiful shoots, you know. We really mm -hmm. did. Um, they were. Canada was a little bit more malleable and willing to work with us, so I could I could really work with really good designers from Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, oh my God, we had a beautiful haute couture show uh, for the season, I think season two, and it was just uh, it was just really beautiful because Jay was there, who's very creative. He allowed me to be who I wanted to be, and we had a lot of fun. It, that was a lot of fun. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the girls were gorgeous. The girls were absolutely gorgeous, and they. They seemed to really want it. It seemed like the Canadian girls were like really, like really wanting to be models. Uh, but again, I got to work with these girls closer so I could talk to them and hear them. When I was a judge, we had no correspondent. I didn't know really anything about them, but what I saw when they came up. So I really didn't understand who they, who they were or what they liked or anything like that, to be honest with you. Okay. Okay. So I just only have one last question for you. Okay, love. And this question, I'm sorry. This is Matthias, and this is, um, this is Matthias, and he wants to know: Is Nola comfortable talking about the allegations against him about his modeling agency? Thank you so much for even bringing this up. That was a incredibly rough time. It was, um, you know, when it's too good to be true, listen to it and believe in your. Your, I always tell people, your gut is your best true uh, bar barometer, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. this, I didn't want to open up an agency. I was happy doing what I was doing. This friend of mine said, oh, you need to meet this person. He wants to open up an agency. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. We met him. A group of us met him uh, for a coffee or, or drink or something. And he really, really kept you know, on me to open up an agency. I go, I'm not going to open up an agency. I'll help you open up an agency. So I did. I was like organizing it and do this. This is what you need. Found this, we found a space. He signed the lease. Okay. You know, I went away uh, to work in Los Angeles and I came back and I had a friend with me and I go, you know what? I got to go tell this guy, you know, it's time, time to get my payment because it's over. I, I did the whole office for him. I, kind of set up everything that he wanted. I walked in the office, was so gorgeous, like, wow, this guy did a good job, you know? And he said, you know, I'm not gonna pay you. What do you mean? He goes, I want you to be my partner. What do you mean, my part what? what, you mean partner? Let's 50-50 partner, this, 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 and that. I'm like, I don't know, let me think about it. And I'm like, wow, he goes, this could be, this could be your office. You do you. You do the, all the creative. You're excellent finding models. You're excellent at I handle all the business. That sounds good to me because I don't like doing the number stuff and, you know, all the accounting stuff. And maybe and he, had a, he had multiple companies and he had an accounting department. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I remember I was going to turn 40. Like two weeks before my 40th birthday. I'm like, okay, this could be interesting. So I spoke to my mom, a few of my friends. You know, maybe this will be good. You know, you think, you know, maybe, maybe this is what I need. You know, maybe this is something. Um, he'll handle all the business. I do all the creative. That's what I'm good at. You know, okay. So one time I go, okay, we can maybe make this work. You know, there was no pre. Um, I didn't uh, set this up. I did not uh, uh, pre-plan this. If I would have pre-planned this, I would have done it a lot different. I would have already been scouting for models. We opened up with no models. I hired one, um, we hi he hired one um, uh, employee, and me and this woman built the whole thing within four months, meaning scouting and find doing the books, creating a board, like 
from scratch. And it was all trial and error. Never, never. He was in the background. He never was around. And then we started booking our first month open. We, were, we booked a lot. We opened up with uh, exclusives for Calvin Klein, Prada, Givenchy. No, Calvin Klein, Prada, Versace. And then things started to roll. Very slow, but they started to roll. And I never stole a model. I found all models fresh. And I was the whole thing. You know, if we're going to be a new agency, just find new faces, which you have to realize is very hard because people, uh, there's, no, there's no money coming in, you could say. Fast forward, things started to roll slowly. It was only me and her, and then him once in a while coming in. As the weeks and months went on, we started to become successful, but it was very, very tempered financially because we were working a lot with the men's board. The women's board was not really building as quickly um, because me and her both came more like, she came from a men's board, and I was working a lot with the men's sides of stuff at that time too. So then the industry started to build. We started booking you know, big campaigns for, uh, Hugo Boss, Mark, um, Hugo Boss, uh, Michael Kors, Tommy Hilfiger, Iceberg, Abercrombie and Fitch. Later on, we booked uh, uh, when she left, and I was booking at Saint Laurent, uh, two campaigns back to back. Mike, uh, Mark Jacobs, and one or two other ones like that. At the end, my business partner left. My, my, not at the end. In the middle, my business partner left, and left me in debt a large sum, six figures, which people don't know this. I should have at that time been smart enough to be like, close it. I can't go on. But I was, I was, when you're in that working mode and you're seeing things are happening, maybe the finances weren't coming in as much as we could have had. I didn't want to stop. I was proud of what we were, what we created. We really created something from nothing you could say. So I was like, okay, I'll try to take this over which was not the smart move. I should have said, close it, house the models out, do the mother agency thing. But I go, no, I'm gonna try to do this. How, with no, already in debt, you know, six figures, I had to now, and I was the face, no one knew him. So even if he was the bad guy, and nobody gonna say anything about him, I was the one on television, I was the one in front of everything. So who's gonna get blamed? Me, you don't even know him, <laughs> you know? I actually was even trying to work out deals with people to pay them the money that was not there that I was trying to do, but unfortunately I couldn't because I was trying to keep everything going. Then you have to be careful in this world. And as a new friend of yours who just met recently on Instagram, people are really nasty and people are haters when they're, it's, it's unbelievable the things that people will say and do for two minutes of instant fame when they're not deserving, just to jump on a freaking bandwagon. And it's sick and it's, and it's deplorable. At the end, I hired a person who should have been fired immediately, but because of their sob story with their mother issues that I'm like, oh, well, okay. But everyone around me kept telling me, get rid of that person. And I didn't listen. And it's again, my fault then that I did not listen. And they were not doing the job. Did you do this? Yes. Billing is done. Okay, fine. Okay. Billing was not done. Why are you telling me it was done? So five weeks later, six weeks, no, where's, where's the, what's going on here? You know? Oh, I find that you, you build it every day. I would ask, did you build, did you build? Never. He, it was, there was issues with this person. That's why they were let go of many agencies before, but I felt sorry, stupid, completely stupid. I was to listen and and you know, be faithful to something like that. But I did um, out of my ignorance and I take responsibility for that because I should have let that person go. And they started a manipulation of, of lies. Those people that actually were suing me, I can tell you this right now, three of them were paid with extra because I said, pay the model with my commissions of five and $8,000. So they have five and $8,000 on top. One model, she had a check for $400 sitting there in the agency, but she decided to jump on the bad one again for nothing because she's doing nothing now. And the other one, she was just trying to get a lot of PR when she had a nasty article come out about her being an, a very bad girl. And I'm saying that in a very kind way. And I says, we're here to support you. If you were to add up the money that my mother and myself personally put in, 
it is th 10 times over what they say I owe them. It's pennies, three, 500, 800. That, not, it's not even a, a large number, but they saying millions, it's lies. I've never spoken about it. I don't want to feel like the victim that my business partner did this to me. You know what? I'm a, I'm a 51 year old man now. At that time I was in my mid forties or 46. I hate when I hear all these people, oh, my business partner screwed me over this. I never say that. You know what? I should have stopped it when he left and he already put me in debt. I'm just, uh, six figures close. I should have said goodbye then. Because you don't see me say anything about it. Because you know why? I go, people, I'm, I'm too much of an elegant gentleman to start bashing people and really telling you their dirt. And all the people that have been sued for much more money than I have, but because I am on, I was on TV, I was successful. I was the first person to find multiple supermodels. I am the person who also, you know, was on television and has had an incredible career. They have it because people that owed me hundreds of thousands of dollars and I went to sue them to get my money back. You don't see that in the press because I don't wish to make them look bad and to even bring the models down that were at the place that I placed them because I don't do that. I am powerful enough with my hard work and my knowledge and my eye, I can create and I'll always come back fighting because I believe in karma and I believe in good. And I believe that those people that want to say nasty things and they believe it, well then I guess you believe that President, you know, Donald Trump was his, uh, um, the election was stolen. Because if you ask a lot of people, they'll say that too. No, like, you know, what What I really appreciate is, you know, you just being, you've been very honest. I feel like very honest I hope so. throughout throughout this whole I, thing. I, I, and I, and I'm on behalf of, you know, the people who are watching and who support me doing these anti and to exclusive. And I have to me. tell people, I have to tell people, and, you know, y'all can tear me up if you want to, but, you know, I'm not a big celebrity. I'm not a big person. But, you know, Miss Oliver has her own life where, like, in 15 minutes, of I need course. to jump in a car and, and go to go to the studio so I can record a verse and send back to one of my favorite drag race girls who wants me on a song with her. So awesome. a lot of times, a lot of times when I'm doing these lives with, with, with people from Top Model, the only thing I do, I contact the person because I know yes. they're on Top Model, which is my second, my second favorite show of all time. They say yes, I put a flyer up, and I go about my business because I'm, I'm really... And it may be to a fault, not interested in just the things of the things and all of that. That that part doesn't interest me. But I'm grateful for you, um, excuse me, responding to that and answering that question because of it course. was something that people that people wanted to know about. So Absolutely. thank you, I'm thank you, thank you so much. I didn't know nothing about thank it you. until I, I knew something about it. I'm thankful that you asked me. I've never spoken about it. I can go into grand, grand details. Maybe I should write a book. Uh, a fiction book about the industry and really tell the real tea and espresso or whatever you would like to say, because it will be so ridiculous. When they see the truth and they see how people were jumping on this ridiculous bandwagon for nothing. And mm -hmm. if you really want to know the truth, you would, you would die. And you know what? I think I need to, because it's ridiculous because people are so nasty. Yes. They are so and you nasty. don't know like, I don't even know you. And what are you lying saying? I don't know you. What are you talking about? And, and Nole, I'm, again, I'm not no jury. I'm not no, I went to Morehouse College and I graduated number one in my department for my degree in music. I don't know shit about law, legal, asking, that's not me. I, you know, sometimes to my detriment, I try to live in a fa-la-la -la happy land because there's so much negativity I'm, out here. That's how I but, am too, unfortunately. But in just being and just being transparent, I do think you probably that's probably something that you probably should do. And maybe this is a is 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 a start. Sorry, that was my alarm going off telling me to get the hell. It could be. No the thing. But maybe maybe that's okay. a good start for you to talk uh, to talk about things. Yes, and while, while not while not going into other things, I want to know how do you respond when or what are your feelings when certain things are put out there about you, like. What 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 is it you you being the person that's being these things are being said about? How does no lay handle it, process it, deal with it, respond, you know what? whatever, I whatever? Pay attention to it because that's what they want. 
they want me to pay attention. I don't pay attention to negativity. I'm like you. I live in my own bubble. I always have, unfortunately. So I go on and I and I keep moving. Um, I'm working on some wonderful new projects that I'm so excited about. But I think the book thing should definitely be up there now that I'm talking to you and this having this wonderful conversation. It feels wonderful to talk about it and, and just uh, be open and honest with you. Um, I don't, people are always gonna be negative. And that's what I've learned very young in life. People are always gonna say something negative. Take that negativity, that's too much energy. I'd rather take it for something good and make it positive. Uh, mm -hmm. every, you're gonna have haters, you're gonna have lovers. The two most powerful things in this world are love and hate. I prefer to love and not hate. And unfortunately, not everyone feels that way. And like I said, mm -hmm. again, people, the whole Meghan Markle thing, people are loving her and hating her. What is your truth is what you believe and what your insights tell you. And that's how I, that's how I think life needs to go. And I try to look past it. I feel, I feel sorry for people who are so negative because what happened to you? What, what, what happened? I don't know. But whatever it is, try to find the light and find your happiness. And that's the best thing you can do in this world. Okay. I have two more questions for you. And then, Nole, I'm going to get out of your hair. You got to go. I'm going to leave you alone. Yes. Um, I want to know, what is your understanding of how people view you in this world and in the industry and, your, and, and like who you are as this fashion icon and all the work know. you've done throughout I, the many you know years? What? I never think of my work being done. I don't think, I don't, I don't, I, I never really think of myself as anything special than, than I'm a working person. I never say, oh, I'm on television. I never, I worked with so many mega celebrities. I never thought of myself as interesting enough to think of myself as a celebrity, as you would say. I just work, work, work. And the one blessing that I've always had when people would say, you know, you're the same person when you were on TV and off TV. You haven't changed. I'm like, well, am I supposed to change? Mm, I hope not. You know, maybe something looks nicer on me or this or that, but I don't want to change. I want to be myself. Mm -hmm. And I think people either love me or hate me and that's fine because at least I'm getting a reaction and a reaction is very important. And I think people know that I have an incredible eye. I think people know that I'm very talented. Some people can like that and some people can hate that. But whatever it is, I want to be happy and I want to create the stuff that I want to create. Okay. And so the last question I'm going to ask you is, I ask everybody this, if you were standing in front of Tyra Banks right now, what would you say to her? What would I say to Tyra Banks if I was standing in front of her? Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. would say, uh, well, that's a good question. I would say, I don't know. That's a good question. I would say, are you happy? Did, did okay. you guys have a great relationship during your time on Top Model? Oh, I think we did. She was kind of funny. Okay. She was actually very, very funny. Mm -hmm. She was um, very sweet. Uh, she was nice, you know, but that, you know, sometimes the people that you see on TV that are very, very nice and very sweet, that's a different picture than the, than the truth. I don't know. She seemed nice. She seemed sweet. That's all I could say. She um, was, uh, I mean, again, that's another whole yearly topic about that with friends that have, that's another whole topic. But uh, she was very nice and it was a, pleasant experience, you could say. But I hope she's happy, and I hope that whatever she's doing in her world, she keeps on going and just keeps making herself, you know, bigger and better. And I hope that she just finds her happiness, whatever that is. Okay. Is there anything you want to add into this a and exclusive with Nole Marin? Thank you for the opportunity. It's a pleasure meeting you. You're freaking awesome. Um, I had a great time on the show. There were some tribulations in the back end on production, but I had a blast and it will be a part of me forever. What happened? No, late. I just want to apologize. I just want to apologize. If I called you Noel, it's only because we talked about Noel earlier in my brain. Oh, said I Noel. Mean, I mean, it's I no mean, late. I am so sorry if, if I was calling no you Noel problem. sometimes. I'm so sorry. Don't you sweat it. Things like that don't bother me. That is the, uh, the little so things sorry. of life. Please don't worry about that at all. Well, but thank no you for way. everything. This has been a blast. I hope to meet you one day in person, and I'll keep watching. Yes. Show. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, that's a T.S. Madison experience every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on WeTV. <laughs> 
No legumes are the rest of your day. If, Thank you, bye, love. little baby down there. Bye, bye doggy you. hoggy. Bye, love. Bye, no way. Thanks, my friend. To you. How you do this thing? Right. I'm looking for the egg button. Looking, it don't want you to leave. Here I am. Let me try to get this thing, boo boo. Okay, here she goes. I think end, leave. And he's gone. Listen. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you guys' support and whatnot. This video will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. That is the Oliver Twix, T-W-I-X-T, YouTube channel on YouTube, where you can find this interview and so many other a and and Twix exclusives. I love you guys. I, was my earring terrorizing y'all? My boyfriend just bought me these earrings. And I can hear him rattling in my ear because y'all have heard of, I feel, you know, I feel bad if y'all, if y'all, if, I need to give one of y'all my number so y'all can text me when shit be going on. Because I don't be looking at the comments. But if y'all text my phone, I'll see it. But anyways, listen. Bleh, I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to parade and kegel. I need your pussy tight because we're about to go on an A&TM ride. This week is about to be filled with some people. Y'all gonna be like, eh. Bye, y'all. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? This is Oliver Twix, the head nerd in charge, telling you to make sure you tune in every Thursday, of course, to see me. <laughs> and you can see my other friends and family doing the thing of the things of the things. Listen, you do not want to miss it. It is family fun and crazy chaos. It's always some shit going on from every, it's so many twists and turns. You do not want to miss this. CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back get back CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back get back CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back get back CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back 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 CAP zapping all you hoes away like CAP 